M1 is a laser engraver and cutting plotter from my friends at X2. You've seen me use their CO2 laser cutter many times. The M1 uses a laser dial, not a CO2 laser, and that's an important distinction. In general, I've always found that the laser dial engravers on the market were not safe and not well designed. I've probably turned down over a dozen review units. But that is slowly starting to change and we're starting to see safer, more usable designs like the M1. The other thing that is unique about the M1 is it incorporates a drag knife, making it work as a cutting plotter like the Quick Cut. Now, I've always been a bit dismissive of cutting plotters as a shop tool since I'm not very crafty. I do more functional designs, and we all have that bit of bias where we think if we can use something to its full potential, we want to pretend it's not useful. But after a week of using it, I'm convinced that even if personally I can use the cutter to its full potential, it adds a tremendous amount of value to the machine. Anyway, talk is cheap, and the best way to show what I'm talking about is to use the M1 and show you what it can do. Okay, let's do some projects on the M1. Let's power it on. As you can see, the light, as you can see, the light is flashing in the front and uh, it's home. There is a red dot here and in principle, if the camera captured the displacement of the red dot, it knows the difference between the material and it will adjust the height for, uh, the, uh, for cutting. Now, let's close the lid. Or you can use the user-defined material uh, function. You can type it in by yourself if you already measure it by your caliber. This is what I'm going to use. This is a SVG file on my business card. But as you can see, this is a little bit off from the business card, so I'm going to move it a bit in the center. So you see the power is all preset. Power is 90%, the speed is 250 and passes one. BMAP mode is grayscale, lines per CM 200. And if you think it won't work, it needs more power, you can use user-defined parameters. You can change it. You can change it like to full speed 100%. And we are going to use the X2 selected reference. Okay, process. So you can see the preview here. It says it takes about 12 minutes. Let's frame it. Just press the button here and the laser head will go to where it's going to engrave. All right, once you're sure that it is the correct area, framing complete. Press start from here, and they're sending a file for processing. Press the button on the device to start processing. Okay. Okay, let's turn on the film extractor. Okay, complete. Let's take a look. This is not bad at all. So <laughs> this is my QR code. If you scan it, you can find my WeChat. And these are all my social media account ID. <laughs> they can look for me there. They can contact me for my email. And this is my logo. Not bad at all. It took uh, 12 minutes to make this. 
I can even engrave on the back also, but it will take 24 minutes. I can flip it and then engrave on the other side. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to show you some. Let's select the dog tag here. Okay. Silver bone dog tag. So it's 1.8 millimeter thickness. Okay. That's... Oh my God, this is so cute. So it says the word is too small because I scale it down. It says fast hide Akita. So cute. Select our material, silver bone dog tag. Okay. It's pretty cute. So I have one dog tag for more. more. And one for Fa Tai. I can even put them both together. So now I have more more and fat I can I can even put it on myself. It's gonna mess up my hair. That's gonna mess up my hair. Oh. See, it's pretty cool. Ah. Wow, this one is not bad at all. It can be my beer holder map. See, they already put the uh, foot on the back of the um, rock coaster. And I can just put my can of beer over here. This is pretty cool. I set it aside. So this is their project center. You see, they have a bunch of stuff. They sent me all those stuff too. So this is the double growth mobile phone stand. I think we're gonna try this. Let's try this. Okay. So this is the material they sent to me, it's the wood. I'm gonna put it in. All right, now we have the double groove stand. Our phone spell, we panic. Okay, you can just stick your phone inside. Take it out, it's very simple. Just pull it down. Okay, press this, put it in. And um, hold this end and turn this side until you only see the triangle tip, okay? So this is the right on material that comes with the X2 packet. Okay, first, in order to use our vinyl material, in order to cut our vinyl material, let's put the cutting mat on it. This is sticky, right? And then we Put, can we put the vinyl material in the center? Make it as flat as possible. Now it's sticky. Close the lid. See, it's supposed to look like this because when you uh, use your heat press or your iron to uh, press it against your t-shirt, 
or your head this is the direction so if you are going to play, use the play cup function you have to flip the material first and then uh, flip the image now this makes sense right so this is the QR code for our chasing app. If you scan this in the public area, you can show your uh, COVID test data. Okay. New process. So let me peel this off. Scan the QR code. So I've got this leather material here. We can engrave, we can cut. Let's, uh, let's try to use this material. All right, check it out. This is, um, so this is cut and then engraved. So now I can put this on my uh, cap, my hat. Um, they, they, that will require some embroidery work. Okay, next. So I've got a bunch of PVC sh uh, sheet here. I have the transparent one. Uh, and I also have the colorful one. I'm going to use this to um, make something, I guess. I've never <laughs> cut this um, material before. So I've already blade cut a bunch of the color glossy PVC. Next, I'm going to put the transparent frosty PVC sheet in the M1. But we also have some self-adhesive PVC sheet. Let me show you uh, what I'm gonna do with it. Okay. Removable self adhesive. This one. So, this is the final result. This is the result I was looking for. Pretty good. All right, so this is the final result. This is a folding fan. And the cool thing is you can open this and put money inside as a red envelope. It says Happy New Year and everything goes as you wish. So I've got some cheap materials here. I've got t-shirt, I've got a bag, I've got some hats. So uh, this is the cloth I'm going to stuck inside so uh, the cap will 
be flat, so when I iron it, it will be easier. I'm not sure about this material, but this is a hat for winter if it's cotton. The heat transfer rhino will be oh should be okay. Let's let's test it out. See, pretty cool. Okay, next comes right off. Cool. Check this out. It says open source in Chinese. Right next. Woohoo! Check this out. Wow. So they're both a success. Pretty cool. Next, I'm gonna do the t shirt with my tracing app QR code. Voila, check this out. Now I can make my own custom t-shirt at home. Well, that's pretty cool. When I go out, people can just get my t-shirt and say, hey, here I go. All right, that's the X2M one. Now for our pros and cons. Cons, it's a bit smaller than most laser engravers, particularly those new open style gantry ones. For most types of crafting, this is not a major issue and most lumber yards will be happy to cut up panels to fit it. It's a dial laser, so less powerful than CO2. But honestly, this is getting really close in functional utility to a 40 watt laser. If anything, it's a bit cleaner. It's more expensive than a cheap 40 watt CO2 laser, but in my opinion, overall, it's more polished and far easier to use than most. Pros, big ones. Even though it's a dial laser, it's got a built-in fan and an exhaust, a full enclosure with a safety interlock, and an optional air filter. These changes everything about a dial laser. Those open-style gantry units, they are basically table saws. They belong in a garage with the door opened and have to be used with a tremendous amount of caution. Open lasers give you large cutting areas for cheap, but at the cost of any kind of safety. Yes, there is the time and place for them, but they should not be marketed alongside 3D printers. The M1, on the other hand, is almost as safe as a 3D printer. You can put this in your workshop, sewing, or crafting room, no problem. Although, as with all laser engravers, you should have a fire extinguisher nearby. The cutting plotter is hard for me to judge. It's the first time I use one, and I'm not very crafty. I come at this from the same direction as a lot of you. I can barely use a sewing machine. I can use all kinds of other machine tools with no problem, but pretty shades and colors aren't really something that comes naturally. But after a couple of tries, I've really gotten into it. Yes, cutting products like the Creek Cuts have traditionally kind of been aimed at women crafters, but I think that if you are a more power to kind of person and I'm with you there, it's worth putting that aside and seeing everything you can do with a cutting product. The app that comes with the M1 is incredibly easy to use and works on Windows and Mac. I would not say the M1 is for commercial use. It's definitely a hobbyist too, but as a two-in-one, it makes very few of the sacrifices we've come to expect from multi-function tools. It's dual modes don't detract from each other in any way. Overall, this is the first style laser that I really felt stack up favorably against CO2 both in usability and safety. And I think the included cutting proctor is just frosting on top I'm looking forward to getting a better taste of. If you're interested, I'll put the link in the description. Some of you may have noticed my 3-in-1 lathe mill drill off to the side there. And I'm sure you have lots of things to say and unsolicited advice to give. Yes, we'll get to it soon in an upcoming video. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.